Yes, well, the human brain is incredibly complex. It's the most complex object in, in the known universe. It's far more complex than any computer. And I think the unique feature of the human brain is its ability to rewire itself. And that's a process we call neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity underlies our ability to learn, uh, to create new memories and to calculate. And at such a sophisticated level, this is unique to humans. The neuroplasticity is very active in our early years um, and through our teenage years and then is quite stable through our adult years. But in our latter years, our elderly years, it uh, declines and this underlies our cognitive defects and loss of memory functions later in life. This is most dramatic in uh, the neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's disease. So in the neurosignaling group at the Garvin Institute, we're trying to understand the processes, the molecular mechanisms that control this neuroplasticity. In particular, we work on a, a special brain enzyme called GSK3. We know that GSK3 is very important for forming new uh, connections between neurons, new synapses, for maintaining the strength, the signalling between the neurons, and also for helping to create new neurons. The focus of the neurosignaling group is to identify key downstream targets of GSK3 that are vital for maintaining and promoting neuroplasticity in the human brain. We hope that by developing drugs that can manipulate their function, we can help to maintain and promote neuroplasticity throughout our lives in the effort to prevent cognitive dysfunction and memory decline in our elderly years. In addition, they may be able to uh, be used to compensate for injuries in the brain caused by stroke and spinal cord injury. We also hope that these treatments might be able to delay or even prevent the onset of debilitating dementias such as Alzheimer's disease. At present in the clinic, it is very difficult to absolutely, with 100% confidence, identify whether a patient has Alzheimer's disease compared to around 100 other different types of dementias. We hope that by developing a biomarker, we may be able to specifically diagnose Alzheimer's disease, and at an earlier stage, when patients are more receptive to current drug treatments.